Off California's coast lies one of the 58 captivating national parks. Welcome to the Channel Islands, home of beautiful nature, unique creatures, and tons of unsolved mysteries. But the real secrets of the islands have been buried under the surface for thousands of years. Laura Kern is the Chief of Cultural Resources for the Channel Islands National Park. Channel Islands National Park is world famous for its archaeology. Channel Islands really represent a part of California that doesn't exist on the mainland anymore. And because we don't have burrowing animals here, the archaeological record, the, the evidence in the ground is, is intact, and that is unheard of. The preservation of the island's archaeology has made it possible for new artifacts to be discovered, such as a mammoth skull excavated in fall 2016 on Santa Rosa Island. Don Morris is a retired archaeologist for the National Park Service who aided in the excavation of this discovery. I think I can confidently say this is the best skull, uh, pygmy mammoth skull, that's ever come off the island. Uh, certainly it's the best one I've ever seen. And the unusual, mo most unusual feature about it is that the cranial area, the back of the skull, is completely intact. That is an extremely fragile area of the anatomy, and it's usually crushed and broken and missing in your typical skull. And this one is intact. There are actually hollow areas inside that skull, and uh, we, uh, we're really kind of in new ground as we work on this specimen. Back at the Santa Barbara Natural History Museum, Monica Bugby, a preparator and archaeologist for the Mammoth Site in South Dakota, has begun the painstaking process of removing the skull from its plaster cast, a tedious process that will take months to complete. This is kind of an exciting discovery because pygmy mammoths, even though you know they're, they're really cool, everybody likes them because they're small, they're neat, we actually don't know a whole lot about them. Because there's been research done on them for a long time, but there's still a lot of unanswered questions. So this skull in particular, because it looks like it might be in the middle of the two species, Colombian and pygmy, um, it can give us a much better idea of how that process actually worked. Um, you know, how did they actually dwarf from Colombians to pygmies? Scientists use radiocarbon dating to discover how long ago this mammoth was alive. This kind of dating is done by measuring the amount of carbon-14 in a sample and using its half-life to calculate how old the sample is. We were able to date some of the dirt around it. There was some charcoal that we found in the dirt, um, and we radio radiocarbon dated that, and it's about 15,000 years old, I believe. Um, so this guy's actually pretty young uh, when you're you know, considering it's a mammoth. Justin Wilkins, a curator at the mammoth site, has been working with Bugby to clean and prepare the skull for display. So in looking at the past, we can then access how our species or other species handled changes in the environment. So we look at the mammoths, we look at humans, we also look at a bunch of small animals to see how those animals handle these changes. We just keep applying new technology, we can learn more and more about these vestiges of the past and pull out all that information, okay? And then try to decide, predict, based on the information, the patterns we see from these specimens, what patterns we're seeing in the present, how that's going to change in the future. But while technology plays an important part in preserving and researching bones like the mammoth skull, much of archaeology still depends on careful observation and human work. You've got to move dirt, you've got to keep your eyes open, and pay attention to what you're observing. We've been doing that for centuries, and that's still the best way to find stuff. So in the case of this animal, you know, technology didn't play that big of a part. This guy was found by uh, a park service intern who was doing a stream survey. So they were just, you know, doing routine, you know, walk down a canyon and they happened to notice it. The intern who discovered the skull, Peter Laramendi, was a recent college graduate who recognized the tusk sticking out of a wall could be something much more than just a rock. He was part of the excavation. He, he even talked about how, how thrilling it was for him that it was something that you dream about as a, as a little child discovering something like a dinosaur or something really exciting. And, and he was excavating the, the tooth of a mammoth that we have yet to understand where it is in the evolutionary scheme. So it's incredibly exciting to think that these things are still out here. They're still very fragile and we want to protect them and study them in the right ways. But it doesn't mean that people can't still discover 
exciting new things that happen to be thousands of years old on Santa Rosa Island.